Good morning. Uh, I am uh, Representative Rodney Moore. I represent the 99th District in Mecklenburg County. We are here today as African American uh, legislators uh, from both the House and the Senate, the Upper House and the People's House, to, uh, I always have to mess with my good friend Senator Ford, uh, to, uh, to talk about our uh, support of education, educational and parental choice across the board in North Carolina. So what I want to do to start off, I want to make a, I want to give a brief statement and then I'll have a speaker. We'll have Representative Ed Haynes come, followed by Senator Erica Smith Ingram. Where is Erica? Okay. Uh, Senator Ben Clark and Senator Joe Ford. We're a little top heavy with senators here. And each you one can take me off. Oh, no, yeah, no, I want you to speak. And each one in that order, each one will have three minutes three minutes to, uh, to, to speak and uh, think we won't take, have a Q&A, we'll have it after, after the press conference. You can meet with us individually if, which, with some of your questions, okay? So let me make this, let me read this statement. Okay, we stand here today joining our voices for a simple yet powerful statement. We are here to extend our support for educational options for all North Carolina families and students. We stand today to be a voice for the voiceless. Far too often, families and children are left out of the education decision-making process. With that, our support for educational options for all North Carolinians includes parental school choice as a complement to our unwavering support for quality educational institutions across our state, including traditional public schools, public charter schools, private schools, and homeschools. Make no mistake, the bedrock of, stone, of strong community starts with our schools. And we are here to ensure that every child, let me reiterate, every child receives the best education possible, regardless of his or her zip code or family income. As supporters of education, we stand for North Carolina's 1.5 million students enrolled in public schools and the approximately 100,000 public school teachers who serve to educate those students every day across our state. We must do more for our public schools and we stand committed to do just that. As supporters of education, we stand for North Carolina's public charter schools, especially those with the mission of providing educational programs aimed at serving socioeconomically disadvantaged students across our state where we see more growth for these kinds of public schools in the 40 counties that still don't have them. As supporters of education, we stand for North Carolina's Children with <coughs> Disability Scholarships grants, where, where families whose child qualifies under this private school program will be provided the resources to find the educational needs that fit them. As supporters of education, we stand for North Carolina's Opportunity Scholarship Program, which is providing educational op options to nearly 6,000 low-income families. In closing, and in the spirit of, North, of Black History Month, this coalition understands that in North Carolina, you cannot talk about education and education reform without talking about race and politics. It is our hope that by uniting together in support of education for all and for all quality education models that we begin to bridge the gap that has far too often hindered us. Black versus white students, Democrat versus Republican, and traditional public, traditional schools versus non-traditional schools. We have come too far and tackled too many challenges to leave a generation of children behind. Today, together, we stand for these children and we will fight for them by any means educationally. Now we will have remarks from uh, Representative Ed Haynes followed by the order which I previously uh, named. Thank you, Representative Moore. I'm Ed Haynes from Winston-Salem, Precise County, District 72. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to really uh, thank Mr. Darrell Allison for the outstanding work uh, that he's done in bringing this issue uh, to the top for us to take a strong look at 
I've had the pleasure of attending law school with Mr. Allison. I've been watching his work and was happy uh, to sign on with him uh, from my first days here in the House. Um, as speaking of that, as you look at this group of legislators behind me, uh, this group has grown. Uh, this group was not this big three years ago, and there's several of our colleagues who wanted to be here today uh, who were unable to be here, but uh, I am happy uh, to look at a group to see now that we're representing uh, urban and rural. We're representing the Senate and the House. Um, there are folks who want to come on and who are, re who are recognizing and understanding this issue that we have in our uh, schools across the state, and it is an issue <clears throat> of opportunity. And I think that is what we are talking about and what we're most focused on when we look at our kids. It's the opportunity. It's the same, we want our children to have the same opportunity that many of our parents afforded us when we were growing up in the public schools uh, of North Carolina. Um, as I think about those opportunities, uh, my parents had me attending schools all over the district in order to get into the right school, the right public school to fit me. Uh, to fit my skill set and to fit what I needed to grow uh, as a young man. We were successful doing that. Uh, what we have right now, and especially in my district in Winston-Salem, is a city that has <clears throat> largely resegregated itself in our public schools. We have 99% free and reduced lunch schools, not that a 99% uh, black and Latino. Uh, that is what our elementary schools mostly look like. Uh, in my district. There are a couple that don't look like that. Uh, those 99% free and reduced lunch schools, they have third grade reading proficiency rates that are in the name of, they're in the, they're in the range of 11%, 14%, 22%, and one that I visited last week that's around 7 or 8%. I didn't say the average age of the child at the school <coughs> was eight years old. I said their third grade reading proficiency is eight percent. I want you to let that resonate with you for a second. That is a 92 percent fail rate. I cannot in good conscience look at any mother or father and tell them that they should be satisfied with that. None of us would invest our money with a broker who had a 92 percent fail rate. It would not happen. Right? And so I think we are in a position now as legislators who come to the point where we recognize that we need to think about thoughtful choice, which I think is what we're doing. We need to approach this in an open manner and, as a team, and in a team concept. But when we have uh, failure rates like that in some of our public schools that impact mostly students who look like the folks behind us, we have to take a stand on it and we have to call attention to this matter and I am glad to continue to support um, Mr. Allison and his, and his program here and continue to support thoughtful choice across the state of North Carolina. Thank you. Good morning. I want to thank you for being here. I am Senator Erica Smith Ingram. I represent eight counties in eastern North Carolina. Bertie, Chuan, Edgecombe, Hertford, Martin, Northampton, Tyrrell, and Washington counties. And so I hope that didn't count toward my three minutes because it takes some time to list my district. I come from a very rural district, unique in its opportunities, but also significant with its challenges. I stand here today to support parents having a choice in educating their children. I stand today as a parent who did not produce cookie cutter children despite sharing the same DNA and the same genetical coding. I believe, as Miles Monroe, Monroe once shared, there's a reason why McDonald's can set up shop right beside Hardee's across the street from Burger King, down the corner from um, Wendy's or Bojangles. You ever wonder why those companies, same entities, can set up shop right beside each other? It's because of free market and offering choice. I believe that we should have that same choice and same free market in education. I stand today as a parent whose eldest child graduated from Kip Pride High GCP Charter School in Northampton County. I stand here today as a parent whose younger child did phenomenally well in the traditional public school. I stand today as a public school educator knowing that we cannot talk about education without being able to reiterate the importance of parents having choice 
parents having opportunity, parents having the resources they need to provide the educational environment for their children that is most conducive to their success. I stand today as a parent who at one point in our matriculation had my children in a private school and resources were very limited. We had to give up a lot of other things to be able to afford that opportunity for my children. I stand today with my colleagues because we must continue to support our traditional public schools to make sure our 180,000 teachers have adequate pay, that our 1.5 million students have access to resources, technology, and textbooks. It is imperative that we understand at the end of the day, the fact of the matter is we need educated students in order to have a productive citizenry. Companies who are relocating in the rural areas that I serve, they need a skilled workforce. The challenge for us is to get away from the either or and set our hands and tasks to both and. I support traditional public schools and I support public charter schools and I support private schools and the opportunity for students to be able to participate. Let us stay engaged and let us work vigorously as we make sure we are working to secure the strength of North Carolina and these United States. Good afternoon. I'm uh, Senator Ben Clark. I represent Senate District 21, which consists of Polk County and uh, Cumberland County. Wrong one. Okay. okay. As far as I'm concerned, the expenditure of public funds for a public cause is always a good thing. I can think of no greater cause than educating our children. We often hear folks say that um, I don't want my public dollars going to private schools. But what they fail to understand is those public dollars are going to educate children who are part of our citizenry. So again, the expenditure of public funds for a public cause is a great thing, and I can think of no greater cause than education of our children. I believe that our toolkit of educational opportunities for our children should not be latched with unnecessary restraints, and it must be populated with a variety of options. We've heard our members here, most of them have maybe attended public schools, private schools, home schools, charter schools. But oftentimes what we see in our society is that those of us who have or are privileged to come from homes where we had the means, we had those options. More often than not, what happens in our society is that those who are challenged in terms of means are those, those are the ones that do not have the opportunity. Those are the ones that do not have the choice. And I believe it is incumbent upon us to make sure that those who come from homes where the means are challenged also have a choice. It is time for us to adopt, excuse me, it is time for us to adopt a paradigm which component choice options are not viewed in an adversarial light. They should be viewed as complementary, and we should fully support them. Our parents and our children should not be viewed solely as consumers of education. They should also be viewed as individuals who facilitate the process and who have a responsibility and an obligation to help shape the process and that they are recognized as such by the policy makers. I support all components that we have out there now, the Opportunity Scholarship Grant, the traditional public schools, the public charter schools, and by the way, I would like to add that Cumberland County is the greater, greatest consumer in the state of the Opportunity Scholarship Grant, and I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Allison for that and for his efforts in uh, bringing about choice to the state of North Carolina. But we have to remember that it, at the end of the day, it is about the children educating the children because education is a force multiplier that provides opportunity. Without it, our children are doomed, our society is doomed. And we should not just put artificial shackles on choice. Wow. <laughs> wow. 
I must I must have woke up. I have I had a strange day waking up. I know it's a strange day when <laughs> Senator Ford doesn't want to make some remarks. But uh, so so there you have it. Uh, we have come together as a, co a coalition of African American uh, legislators to to say that we support all educational options for all children in this state, whether it be charter, private school, through the opportunity scholarships. Uh, traditional public schools. We want every child in North Carolina to succeed. And so if we look at the present trends, we're seeing some alarming rates with the school to prison pipeline and some other things. So it's an incumbent upon us to do everything that we can do in our power as legislators to uh, turn that trend around. And so right now I want to introduce uh, uh, Mr. Darrell Allison, uh, the uh, president of Parents for Educational Freedom in North Carolina, a dynamic young man, uh, Daryl. I uh, um, just wanted to say publicly that uh, we've had a journey with one another. It took me a minute to get me here, <laughs> but now, but now that I'm here, I'm going to go all the way with you. And so, let let, let you come to say a few remarks and uh, thank you. and thank you for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And it'll be brief. Representative <coughs> Kelly Alexander had to step out. Representative Elmer Flood, Floyd, uh, right. Representative Cecil Brockman, Representative Ed Haynes, Senator Joel Ford, Senator Ben Clark, Senator Smith Ingram, and especially uh, Representative uh, Rodney Moore. I don't take for granted that today, February 28th, marks the end of Black History Month, nor do I consider this exact moment being merely symbolic, as it's more than that. Our organization, Parents for Education and Freedom in North Carolina, will celebrate 12 years in a few months. And though the ideals of parental school choice has been especially acted on legislative in North Carolina the past few years, our organization has long been doing the work of statewide engagement, long before that time. In fact, we were just as active then in 2005 when Democrats controlled the House, the Senate, and the Governor's Office. We've never underestimated the real challenges and battles when discussing education and parental school choice in North Carolina, a southern state, because race and politics is instinct distinctively, intrinsically connected to the subject, no doubt about it. So let's talk about the proverbial liberal, liter literal elephant in the room. Republicans, by and large, have historically embraced parental school choice more than Democrats in our state. However, parents for education or freedom in North Carolina We've never rested on that. We believe that the ideals of parental school choice cuts across political lines, racial lines, socioeconomic lines. In fact, it's not a Republican thing or a Democratic thing. We believe, we believe that it's simply the right thing for families. That is why I personally don't take lightly standing here with these leading Afro-American legislators as the words they express are a testament of just how far we've come <coughs> in looking at K-12 education in North Carolina more comprehensively, especially for our neediest of children. Today is truly historic, and I am so honored and humbled to be standing with each of you today. And again, I thank you, and Representative Moore, thank you so very much for your leadership. Okay. Now we now we said originally that we wouldn't take questions, but we have we yeah, have this room for a little while. You got it. It's in your name. And so, if, if there are any questions for for either the senator, senators, or I see they're running. Committee <laughs> meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let me. I, I know I have to go as well. But this is this this is very important. You know, committee meetings come and go, but this is a moment that we really have to show that we're going to provide some leadership in this area. And so, first of all, I'd like to just acknowledge uh, two business leaders in the room, uh, uh, Bob Morgan from the Charlotte Chamber and uh, Bill Russell from the Lake Norman Chamber. And they understand, just like I do, that, that proper education is vital to our workforce, vital to our economic uh, stability, not only in the Charlotte region, but from across, from, from across the board. Would you like to say something now, Senator Ford? Any questions I see, so we can I, move on. All right. I see, this, hold on now. This is, this is Representative Moore's press conference. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw you then. Go ahead. Yeah, um, there's a <laughs> view that charters are used as vehicles for resegregation. Um, and it's come from a variety of sources. And there was a recent report that showed 
among nationally that um, in North Carolina, the charter schools are demographically are least like the, the <coughs> district schools surrounding them, the five district schools surrounding them. What's your response to that? Well, I would say if you look at, I believe that because of some different educational policies, when you look at the uh, us not busing students now, if you look at housing trends, social economic uh, uh, trends in each neighborhood, I believe that it's not just charter schools. I think that's a symptom across the board. And so I think that with, with educational choice, there may be somewhat of a, a way to kind of to kind of turn that trend around by letting parents be able to to go out and. and and figure out where they where their child's best uh, educational um, opportunity is, and so and so that's so that's not just germane to charter schools. That's just that's just the trend and the pattern that's been going on for the last 20, 25. Representative Moore, may I? Yes, absolutely. I, to to your to your point there, I, and I, I I would agree with Representative Moore, uh, and I and I think you only need to look at Winston Salem, North Carolina. Uh, as, as a prime example of the resegregation uh, of our of our public schools that has happened, uh, you can look. We, we're back to a neighborhood school model uh, in the city that has resulted, <clears throat> and frankly, you know, disastrous results uh, for many many of our students, and especially those uh, who are black and brown in our city. And that's just that's just the truth of it. I have a school in my district, Cook Elementary School. Uh, that the school system has has finally uh, put into a program where they're trying to recapture and improve the school. And I think we're all very happy uh, that they have invested up with $1.5 million uh, into Cook to get new faculty and staff and to uh, get new programming in. But the truth about it is that one and a half miles away um, uh, is Whitaker Elementary School. Uh, and it, that's in my district as well. And uh, that school's 98% reading proficient. Now ask me what that school looks like in terms of demographic makeup. What does it look like in terms it of demographic It looks it looks makeup? very much unlike Cook. <laughs> and Cook is 99% uh, black and brown, and uh, Whitaker is something in the neighborhood of of, of 20%. Um, it's just the only thing that has ever really worked in this country when it comes to um, closing the learning gap. Uh, is integration and we have run from that as a society uh, and, 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 and I understand we talk about choice and so people have made the choice you know in Winston-Salem to run from that but we have to open up our opportunities when our choice leaves a certain segment of our community in such a position that they have no hope you know of, of getting out of it and so that is why we are going to continue to support choice in this matter thank you any other questions if nobody else is going to ask a question, ask them. Okay. Okay. Um, the National NAACP has said that they want to slow the growth of charters. And I heard a national report that talked about this and used an example of a school in Baltimore. Excuse me. That was a, a good district school that was being unpopulated because there was a charter that opened up and everybody wanted to join the charter. And people in the neighborhood were saying, well, we really like this district school, but now they can't keep it open anymore. So um, do you think that there's a danger that there might be a, a depopulation of good district schools when charters come in and there are market forces at work and, and the charters kind of you know, attract people from good schools? Well, Lynn, you have basically proven the point of my press conference, <laughs> uh, parental choice. I think that we, 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 do, we do have some competition in, in education just like we do in business and workforce and all of that. And so I think that's a, what, you, what you just described as a prime example of uh, parental choice uh, being exercised. Uh, do we have some, absolutely we have some good public schools and, and we need to we need to honor that we need to highlight that but at the same time each parent should be able to to make the decision about what's best for their their child's educational needs so i i, I think that's a good example of, uh, of, of of what you of what this press conference was about today yeah. 
And just, just as a, uh, on another note, um, to be honest, and I can't speak for the circumstance in Baltimore, and certainly you have outliers um, everywhere. Um, but what I can say uh, is that in my district and in some of the larger districts that I'm more familiar with, um, I don't know of parents running from good programs. I don't know of parents having their kids in good programs where they want them, where those kids are thriving and surviving and, and moving forward in the way the parent would have them move forward, where these parents are leaving. I don't see that. I don't, I don't see that in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I haven't seen that in Raleigh, you know, since, I, you know, since I've been here. I certainly can't speak to some of the other you know, rural districts and in Charlotte. I'll leave that up to the representative and to Senator Ford um, and, 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 and those folks. But uh, where there are good programs, parents run toward you know, those good programs. Um, I certainly have seen systems set up and set up uh, in some of our public programs that actively squeeze the life out of schools that were once good um, and that were once thriving. And they do them and they, they squeeze the life out of these schools sometimes for all kinds of ugly reasons that I think we alluded to earlier today that we haven't really had an honest conversation about. And so really a lot of what we're trying to do here is to press the conversation forward and to bring our charter and choice people together with our public school folks so that we can figure out uh, as, a, as a state what the heck is going on and what we're going to do to save our kids. I think that is what this is all about. So, so we're gonna so we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up in a nutshell. Um, any more questions? No, thank you. Okay. Right. Anybody? Anybody else? Well, well, we all of us will be available for uh, for comment uh, after uh, after the press conference ends, and we're at, at, the, at 15 minutes out, so we will end this press conference. Thank you guys for coming. If you have any further questions, uh, reach out to us. Thank you.